Now, how many of you have ever been in a space where you are determined to fit in, right? You're going to do everything it takes to fit in. You're not going to let anybody tell you that you don't belong. But as a result, you end up adjusting, adapting, and assimilating to fit into a space. So how I think about forced belonging is that we put the impetus on the individuals to say, well, just belong, right? Like if you wanna fit in, if you wanna be a part of this, then don't expect us to change anything, but just show up and do whatever it takes to fit in, right? I think about my experience on my specific team when I was working at Texas Instruments, I did unconsciously a ton of adjusting, adapting, and assimilating to the sort of norms and values of that team just as a function of trying to fit in, right? But what I didn't realize until after I left is that I had lost huge like chunks of myself in that effort. And this becomes a deep cognitive load. It's the shadow job of having to perform, of having to learn and function and and do all of these things in a space. And when you do all of those things, it takes away your capacity to actually meet your objectives, right? To like be, bring your most brilliant self and bring all your great ideas. And so what we are really talking about here are how do we create structural belonging? environments where people get to show up as their authentic self. So as Davey said, that he gets to show up and, and dress in a way that fully reflects his identity and not feel any repercussion of that, right? Like that's the sort of idea. How do we create space where I get to be a square peg in a square hole? I get to be a round peg in a round hole and not have to play that game. That's not a survival tactic to fit in. There's just space for me to show up and to be myself. But when we look at this very well known and very well cited sort of model of needs, we can look in and see that um, love and belonging are right in the middle of this pyramid. So we've got to take care of our physiological needs. We've got to take care of our safety needs. And that is before we can actually get anything done, right? So we have to, you know, think about how do we find that friendship, that sense of connection, that sense of belonging in a space before we can, again, get to those places of esteem and self-actualization. So these belonging and feeling valued, these are fundamental human needs. And people need to perceive that they are a valued member of a team and experience treatment that satisfies their needs for belongingness and uniqueness in the workspace. And so inclusive leadership helps us address those two criti critical needs and it enhances performance, persistence, um, collaboration, it boosts attendance and it reduces turnover. Um, I do